Hello and welcome to the video guys. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of background to uh, the build that we're doing today. This has taken every inspiration from a guy called Mortimer. I'll put his link to his Twitter below. Now he had an art piece featured on a dev stream that was three faction crepes. And I really fancied the challenge of putting these into a dojo. So I got in touch, asked him if I could use them as an inspiration. He gave me the go ahead. And with that being said, let's get into it. All right, so the first thing I'm going to tackle is the valley. Now I have done a couple little tests with the organ decorations, and they look really nice when put against the black asteroid rock. So I'm going to kind of create not exactly a valley. It won't be a V shape, it'll be more conical, because I don't want it to have an open end where you can look out into open space. With all the basic rocks in place, we can start planning out the building. I just want to take two seconds before we get into the actual architecture stuff to show you my junk room. Now these rooms are just uh, experiment rooms. I try to match the room type because then the polychrome is going to behave the same. Um, obviously uh, we're building the crab in open space, so my junk room is in open space. Actually I've already roughed out the crab. I've already roughed out most of the architecture that I want to use. Now, I don't consider myself particularly good at architecture, so I found this step really helpful. Just really helps cement the shapes that you want to use and the decoration you want to use. Also gives you an idea of the capacity you're going to churn up. Because the last thing you want to do is get halfway through your build and realize you're not going to have the capacity to maintain a certain level of detail. We're going to begin adding these doorways. When the doorways are in place, I'm then going to grab asteroid rocks and then bring them over the doorways to get the finish I want. It's much easier to bring the rocks over all these individual decorative pieces than it is to force all those individual pieces back into the rocks and then line them up afterwards. This is how the finished entrances will look. Now we're going to start working on the walkways. So I'm going to be edging this walkway with the pillar shaft 8 meter decoration. I'm going to place them about 2 thirds sunken into the ground. I'm going to use 1 meter grid snapping just to make sure that everything lines up easily. After all the edging is in place, I'm going to use the balloon dock pillar decoration to add some supports. The basic structure is down. Now it's time to add some embellishments. So the main embellishment I'm going to use is the Orican and Trati decorative column base. This column base comes with a lot of nice fine metalwork. That's essentially a lot of detail for only one capacity. So now we're going to use all of these items that we've designed, the walkways and the pillar supports. We're going to make a second layer up of this one. I'm thinking on the second layer, I'm going to add some kind of balcony or courtyard.
So now most of the buildings are in place. I'm left with these two main areas. I'm going to use a smaller area on the left for the Orican Crab. I'm going to use a larger space on the right and construct something that our crab is going to be fending off. Okay, so now it's time to tackle the main event, the Orican Crab itself. So the first thing we need to make is the horseshoe shape. I'm going to use this Entrati trim to do that. I'm going to make a slightly smaller horseshoe shape. That's going to help us define the curvature of the shell as it tucks under the body. And to make the actual shell, we're going to use the Oregon Tower Debris. I'm just going to carefully place this around the rims, slowly increasing the angle as we go around. We make it nice and curved. I'd also rotate these pieces so you don't see repeat textures. And then you're going to repeat this shell texture all the way around. Next, we're going to put a flat top halfway through the shell. I'm going to do this along that second horseshoe shape. The next thing to add are the three golden rings that run through the center body of the crown. I'm going to use the tower support decoration for these. I'm going to make the Orokin tower decoration symmetrical by sandwiching two of them back to back. To get the tower structure symmetrical, I'm going to take the tenno trim and I'm going to use the outside edge and the center line that's on the trim to then measure out the spacing. When these rings are in place, we're then going to take the wall texture and fill in the inner areas. Okay, next, I'm going to take some more of that gold Oregon trim, reinforce that top line. This thicker line then will help hide the tops of all the Oricon tower decorations and give it a neater look. I'm going to use the balloon dock platforms to create these side little pieces. Now we come to the face. Now in the original art, the front is quite curvy. However, it does come to a point. So I've opted to use the operator operations pod. It's a nice shade of gold and it actually tapers to a point. We're just gonna place a few of these around the front to try and imitate the angles that are in the original art. I've got the lower part of the face tied off. It's time to implement the crest. I'm going to use the Oricon Filigree Shield. I'm now going to adorn the front of the crest with the Oricon end cap decoration. This is going to give me a very nice thin line. Into this, I can then add some blue lights, just like in the original art piece. And the blue light is just going to be the Oricon public information screen decoration. Now for the front of the crab, I'm going to take more of the operator operations pod. I'm going to flick them on their front because on their reverse side, we have a really nice clean white texture. Got a lot of nice decoration on the underside of it, a lot of nice metal textures. There's a few illuminated areas. Like it's one of those decorations where we get a lot of detail, but very little cap. Now in the original art piece, there isn't too much going on in the mouth. 
So what I decided to go with is the operator lesson chair. I made the gold filigree face outwards and I positioned a few of them running down the face. And this kind of creates a crab-like mouth part. So in the same way we constructed the top half of the shell, we're then going to finish the bottom half. I'm going to aim to create a nice shallow ball using that front trim as a guide. And that's going to give us plenty of surface area to attach the legs. Okay, so we're done with the face. Now it's time to look at the legs. I'm going to start the legs by placing four Oregon Grand Hall ornaments per side. I'm going to make sure we do this symmetrically. And then just nestled in the little filigree on that decoration, we're going to place an Orokin and Trati Gold Orb. This is going to be kind of our basic ball and socket joint that we're going to use. Obviously, crabs don't have these kind of joints, but artistic license. For the first joint, we're going to use the historical archive interface. And then placed on the top of that, we're going to use the Orokin archive power top. I'm going to position these so they look like one piece. That's partly because I'm not too keen on the texture on the underside of the archive. We can correct that by placing an Oricon archive tower through the archive interface so that we can top it with this cool gold filigree. The final joint section is going to be another operations pod. And to repeat this on all eight legs. Now it's time to get to the weapons on the crab. And first we're going to tackle the pike or the sword arm. So the sword arm basically starts off like a modified leg. We're going to go with those first couple of joint structures. Then we're going to add a slightly more embellished ball and socket joint on the end to indicate that this sword would have a large range of movement. So we're given quite a large sword. He is quite a large crab after all. So as we watch the sword getting built, I'm going to do the typical YouTuber thing and ask if you got this far into the video and you're enjoying yourself, can you give the video a like? Stick around after the building portion to see the room showcase. The final thing we're going to build before we get to the room showcase is going to be the crab's shield arm. So on the original art, the shield kind of looks like a swan face. I had a couple of discussions with the artist and that was never really the intention. But instead of the swan face, I'm going to take inspiration from an in-game asset. I'm going to look at the Sigma and Octantis weapon and copy some of its features over onto this new shield design. Now to keep some of the showcase a surprise, I'm going to finish detailing off camera with a couple of ideas of some building changes I want to make. And of course, I've got to put in the thing that our crab is going to be fighting. Enjoy the showcase coming up in a couple of seconds. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.